This talk is on amortizing a 30-year mortgage, finding the monthly payment or the annual payment using guess and check. Um, I'm doing that because I'm, it's part of a process of immersing you in the amortization process because I think you can get a lot of, of insight uh, by playing around with the amortization process in mortgages. So bear with me on this. Uh, some of you may know a lot about amortization already, but again, bear with me. Okay, so what I've set up here is a spreadsheet, and let me uh, take you on a tour of it. First, I have an interest rate, which I uh, put at zero. I could put uh, another number in there, uh, f I, and I will shortly. And then I have a payment, uh, which is the annual payment that, uh, that the borrower will make, and I, I set that at $3,000, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, then we have a column uh, that just says what the year is. Uh, we start with year zero, and year zero, uh, they borrow $90,000. So it's a $90,000 mortgage. And I have these as years, not as months. If, it were really, if I really wanted to do a complete 30-year mortgage, I would have 360 months instead of 30 years. But now I only go up to 30 just to keep the spreadsheet a little shorter. Uh, so 30 annual payments instead of 360 monthly payments. If I were doing monthly payments, when I do the interest rate, let's say I was doing 5%, if we were monthly, I would say 0 0.05 divided by 12 to get a monthly interest rate. But uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, right now I'm setting it to zero. Um, <coughs> again, I'll change it in a minute. Uh, so I'm going to use annual um, annual payments, so one payment per year instead of one payment per month. Okay, so the total debt is, that column is what would happen if you made no payment whatsoever, and you just, you took out your $90,000 loan and let the interest accumulate year by year. So let me put in an actual interest rate let's say 0.05 and you can watch that interest accumulate uh, and until after 30 years if you hadn't made a single payment you would owe almost four hundred thousand dollars about three hundred eighty nine thousand dollars at the end of thirty years okay and then <coughs> I'm gonna have two strategies let me get that back to zero for a second two strategies for paying off the mortgage first I call the savings strategy there we we take our payment and we put it into a savings account and we accumulate interest on the payment. Now if there's zero interest and we put three thousand dollars in a savings account for thirty years we end up with ninety thousand dollars. And In fact what I did was I took that what we end up with thirty years and <coughs> I call that the end state. So the end state after thirty years of a zero interest debt of ninety thousand is ninety thousand and thirty years of zero interest uh, making a three thousand dollar monthly payment is ninety thousand dollars okay and so this is so one method of paying off the mortgage is to put money into a savings account until you have enough at the end to pay off the mortgage so that's one strategy and the another strategy <coughs> I call is to try to get the unpaid principal balance down to zero. And the unpaid principal balance uh, it accumulates interest, uh, but it is reduced by the annual payment. So we start out with the previous balance, we add interest, we subtract the payment, and so on and we want to end up with an unpaid principal balance of zero. So if we have a $90,000 loan <coughs> for 30 years with no interest, and we make a $3,000 payment, our savings at the end of 30 years will be 90000 We can pay off the loan, and our unpaid principal balance is zero. Okay, but what happens if there really is an interest rate? So we're going to put 0 0.05 in there. Okay, now as we pointed out before, the total debt accumulates to 388000 but our saving doesn't catch up to it 
and our unpaid principal balance is very high. And that's because $3,000 doesn't work as an annual payment because of the power of compound interest. The debt start is very large to start with and accumulates interest right away, and our payments are kind of small, and so the unpaid principal balance just keeps going up, and the total accumulation in our savings is not enough to pay off the debt. So let's try something else for a, uh, an annual payment. Let's take this 388000 and divide it by 30, uh, which would give us about $13,000. So let's try that, make that as an annual payment. Okay, now <coughs> our savings are way more than the debt because we, the power of compound interest is working for us. This 13000 turns out to be way too much. We would end up with a negative, big negative unpaid principal balance. So let's try something a little smaller. Let's try um, 8000 Okay, we still have an excess, uh, excess of savings and a negative unpaid principal balance, so we can try even lower than that. Let's try 4,500. Okay, now we have <coughs> um, an excess unpaid principal balance, so we need to go higher. Let's try 6,000. Okay, now we're getting a little closer, but we've paid too much. Let's try something less. Let's try 5,500. Okay, now that we're not we don't have enough saving, we have an excess principal balance, so we need to pay more. So let's try uh, 57.50, since about halfway between 5,500 and 6,000. Okay, we still have need to pay more. So let's try 5,900. Okay, now we can pay less, so let's try 58.50. Okay, we have just a slight unpaid principal balance. We need to pay a little more. Let's try 5860. Um, now we've paid too much, so 5855. Now we've paid just a little too much. Let's try 5854. That's too little, so 585450. Okay, <coughs> and let's try 58, 54, 63. Cause I, and that gives us, so finally after going back and forth, we found the monthly payment that will amortize the mortgage. And next time I'll talk about the formula for that month, finding that monthly payment. And uh, after that, we'll talk about the insights that I think we can get out of looking at this kind of amortization spreadsheet. And I encourage you to set up this kind of amortization spreadsheet.